So now I've covered monogenes of fish, but I want to take a quick foray into monogenes of amphibians because there are some really awesome monogenes that infect amphibians. So uh, we'll start off with polystoma integerimum. Integerimum? I'm really bad at uh, scientific names. So anyway, polystoma parasites can infect amphibians. And infecting amphibians it can be a sort of a difficult thing because a lot of amphibians will go into hibernation and there'll be times of the year where you don't want to be producing eggs because they're very unlikely to hatch and then have a host that they can go on to infect. Uh, so if an individual is in hibernating, it's probably not around a lot of other individuals. It's probably not moving around much. Uh, and if you can time it so that your offspring are going into the environment at the same time as your host is producing a lot of offspring, then there's a higher probability that those parasite offspring will be able to find a future host. So if you check out the adult frog uh, in this figure, the adult frog is infected by an adult parasite. And the adult parasite is living in the bladder and it produces eggs. And these eggs will go into the environment. And if it's early in the year, then uh, it will go through the cycle that's at the bottom of this figure. So the eggs will hatch, it will produce an oncomericidium, and the oncomericidium will find itself a young tadpole to infect. It will uh, infect that tadpole, and then it will very quickly mature in the course of about three weeks and begin producing normal eggs. But this individual looks different than the adults. It's what's called a neotenic, uh, it's what's called neotenic development, which essentially means it retains a bunch of its juvenile traits, but is still able to reproduce. And so, and in general, anytime we're talking about neoteny, that's when juvenile traits are retained and, uh, right, retained over a longer period of time than they would be otherwise. So you've got these uh, neotenic adults that are producing offspring, and the eggs hatch, uh, and you produce more oncomericidium, and then let's follow the, area, the arrow up to old tadpoles, so these can either be hatching later in the season when the tadpoles are a bit older, or they could just be hatching at a uh, during a year when the water warmed up quickly, so tadpole development was fast. And then it will infect its next tadpole host. It will live on the gills. And when uh, metamorphosis begins and the gill flaps start closing, it will move to the surface of the fish, uh, crawl up, and then in through the nares, and it will move through, sorry, by fish I meant frog, uh, move and then move its way down to the urinary bladder. And once it ends up in the urinary bladder, bladder, it will slowly grow over the course of three years, but will not reach sexual maturity. And this is where things get really cool. Uh, the parasites are able to figure out when they should finish maturing and begin to produce eggs by cueing in on what's going on in the host. So when the host releases gonadotropin hormone, uh, and that hormone is associated with the release of testosterone and estradiol and what we know as sex hormones, uh, that tells the parasite that its host is starting to produce or starting to get ready to produce offspring and that in a, a couple weeks, there's going to be offspring that uh, the offspring of the parasite, there's going to be tadpoles that the offspring of the parasite can then infect. So when it can tell that the host is starting to get reproductive, it will start to sexually mature and produce eggs and release them into the environment and try to time it so that when the frog's eggs hatch, so will its offspring, so that there'll be lots of, uh, lots of hosts that it can infect. And in fact, if you inject the frog with uh, the same hormones, you can get the parasites to start producing eggs early because they're queuing in on that hormone. So you can essentially inject a frog and then start collecting some eggs. And to me, this is really cool because it means essentially the parasites are spying on their host by queuing into their physiology. Uh, and, and that to me just seems really cool that you could have a spy inside of you. And as your body talks to, uh, different parts of your body, the parasites are sort of listening in pretty neat. Uh, and the final system that I'll talk about are spadefoot toads and the Neodiplorchus scaphidiopodus, uh, parasites. So these are also monogenians. And the difficulty of infecting uh, spadefoot to toads is that they live in Arizona in the deserts where there's very little water. So these toads will spend, you know, 10 months or so underground in the cool dirt to try to protect themselves from the outside environment. They can't live out there. And they will only reproduce for one to three nights during the time when, the, when there are big rains in the Arizona deserts and there are temporary pools produced. And they'll go to these temporary pools, they'll eat a ton, they'll mate a bunch, and then they'll go back underground. And while the frogs are mating, that's when the parasites need to be producing offspring and trying to infect other hosts. So uh, what, these ta what these parasites do is well, as the tadpoles are developing, or so are hibernating, the adults are producing eggs that are really mature and are right at the point where they're about to hatch. 
So when the frogs leave the ground during those brief periods of rain, the adults are able to uh, lay eggs that hatch almost instantly. And the eggs hatch out Oncomyricidium, which is the free-swimming larval stage. Uh, and these Oncomyricidium are bigger than most, and they live longer than most. They can live up to 48 hours. So most Oncomyricidium will have a couple hours, maybe a day or so, uh, to find their next host before they run out of energy and die. But these guys are given a whole lot of energy so that they can make it for 24 hours. And so that gives them two nights to try to find a host. And as the frogs are breeding, and they've got their noses stuck just a little bit out of the water, uh, the Oncomyricidium will crawl up the fish, jump down its nose holes or its nares, and then uh, move down into the bladder where it will wait for another, uh, another 10 months or another year until they get another chance to reproduce again. So uh, in general, the monogenian parasites are really well adapted to their hosts. They're really good at manipulating the host life cycle and uh, cueing in on what the host is doing so that they can sort of take advantage of uh, any, any cues that they can get for upcoming events. So uh, the monogenians are totally awesome. Next, on to the trematodes.